Yes. All right. So we're going to get started. Um, we've got a number of people online, so I think we're ready. Welcome everyone to the Brown Ranch Annexation Committee's Town Hall. Uh, just to kind of explain what the BRAC committee is, it is made up of both Yampa Valley Housing Authority folks and the city of Steamboat Springs. So we have Gary Suter on there, our city manager, Jason Peasley, the executive director from the Housing Authority, Robin Crossan and Joella West, our city council members, and Kathy Meyer and Leah Wood, our Yampa Valley Housing Authority members. Uh, to start, uh, we like to talk about just the fact that we want to hear from absolutely everyone. And a lot of times we have very differing opinions and our opinions tend to come from our lived experiences. So if you hear somebody speaking and sharing their thoughts and it's against what you're thinking or it makes you a little upset or angry, please just go to maybe a, a perspective of curiosity or wonder and ask them later like where their opinion comes from because it's probably some sort of lived experience that you haven't had. Uh, we're going to start with Annexation 101. A lot of people ask us in our presentations just what exactly is annexation. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to go to the Annexation Agreement or the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding between the City and the Housing Authority. So we'll talk about what that group's been doing for the last few months and which points are we're in full agreement on. And then there's some that we still need to work on. And then we'll do some questions and comments at the end. So to begin with, we want to talk about the history of annexation and steamboat. A lot of times we think steamboat the way it is now, just like occurred 100 years ago, or maybe in 1964 when the ski area started. But it might interest everyone to know that um, a lot of the annexations occurred around 1972, 73. So Brooklyn is the area over by the ice arena on River Road. Um, the Fish Creek Falls area was 1972 and 73, and then the Mountain Ski area also, and also the Whistler area, which is over there on Walton Creek Road, and it's all the residential area that's kind of lower. Um, one of the most recent is Fairview over there on 20 Mile, that was 1989, and then West Steamboat. So out by the airport and um, downhill drive and such was annexed in 89. We've also had about 40 smaller pieces across town annexed in the last um, 40 years, I guess, or 30 years. And one example is up at the top of Yamanite, um, right there off of like Thornburg and Yamanite. So annexation is adding new territory to the existing municipal boundaries. Um, and when that happens, the reason you have to go through an annexation agreement is because the city becomes responsible for a lot of the services that are out there. And so we need to figure out what that looks like. So services could include things like water, sewer, electricity, or it could be um, snow removal and things of that nature. So the West area, this is the West area plan. It was updated in 06, but it was created in 1995. So we've had a plan in place for almost 30 years out there. And the group at that time decided that the West End was the best place for us to expand. Um, I guess it was adopted in 1999. I'm not sure why I have a 1995 number in my head, but um, 2022, the Rock County Master Plan also designates the West as the growth area. So the Brown Ranch sits within that, or the majority of it sits within that urban growth boundary. There's 114 acres that does not, and that isn't part of the annexation agreement at this point. So is a public vote required for annexation? I'm sure all of us in this room get this question a lot. Uh, city council can vote to annex it, or they can send it to a vote. If they were to annex it, and the number of folks in the community thought it should go to a vote, it does take 10% of the registered voters from the 2021 election to determine that it's going to go. So I think that number is somewhere around 1,300 right now. Does annexation mean higher taxes? Not necessarily. Uh, the city of Steamboat Springs does not have a property tax. It's very unusual. We rely on a sales tax based economy, which means the tourists pay for a lot, but there's also some problems with it. And so, um, you know, it's a conversation all the time with these annexations and, and funding for the city. Uh, additional taxes are always determined by the voters. And uh, part of the annexation agreement is to determine the funding streams 
for capital costs and operating costs for the services the city would agree to provide to the Brown Ranch. So what stage is the annexation agreement in? Uh, this group, the Brack Group, Brown Ranch Annexation Committee began in January. They are looking now at going through July 26. So we have two more meetings left. Um, every meeting identifies areas of agreement and areas where we need more research or information. The intention is to have an agreement by the end of the summer. And if you look at the agreement online, and I'll show you the website after this, but um, there's green, yellow, and red. So green are the items that everybody's fully in agreement on. Yellow, we need a little bit of work. And red, we need to figure it out. So the annexation agreement is a draft agreement for the 420 acres the Housing Authority has applied to um, bring into the city. And different areas of negotiation are fiscal impact and funding sources. So like one right now that gets talked about a lot, and John will talk about it a little later, is transit. You know, what does that look like? Um, city infrastructure and maintenance. So that goes back to water, sewer, uh, snow removal, and things of that nature. And um, the proportion of land dedicated to affordable housing. Um, and right now that's, yeah, what, what portion of the 420 acre? <laughs> affordable guarantees, affordability guarantees. We hear a lot, how are you gonna make this affordable? Because things just don't pencil out right now, which we all know, which is why we're here. Um, only market rate pencils out. and. The latest number I heard from uh, some of the engineering and architectural firms in town is they're telling everyone $1,000 to $2,000 a square foot, <laughs> okay? It's gone up that high. It was most recently 500 to 1,000. That comes from Carrie Jay that's working over on the mountain. So obviously he's working with the higher end units, but that's what they talked about. SEAD, thinking about engineering and architectural design doesn't go below $1,000 either. Um, so when you talk about affordability, <laughs> it's super complicated. And the affordable housing commitment from the Yampa Valley Housing Authority and the city is that 100% of these homes out of the Brown Ranch will go to the workforce in Route County. There will be no short-term rentals and there will be no second homes. The local workforce also includes people who have retired from the local workforce. And when we talk about local workforce, that means a business that's actually physically located in Route County. Uh, there will be restrictions on every unit to achieve and maintain affordability. We're calling that a community affordability agreement. Basically means there will be, there will be caps on appreciation. Um, it's designed to promote mobility among affordable supply as life changes. So that means people that all of a sudden have a boyfriend or girlfriend and they want a bigger unit or a spouse, and then they want to have kids and they need a bigger home. Or those of us that are a little older, we might want to downsize a little bit. Um, we have a big issue right now with folks in the 25 to 45 year old range that are leaving the community as they want to have families. So the units tied to the units are all tied to the area median income. The lowest is 30%, 30 to 80% is considered low income. And then when we get to 80 to 120% area median income, we get more into that entry level. And then we're getting a little bit further up as we go to the 200%. The reason we're going to a higher percentage is because we have a housing crisis for folks all the way up to doctors in this community and nurses and school teachers and all the things that all the people that we know are missing police officers city staff housing authority staff we had a joke one time when we couldn't get enough good applications for a certain position we're like well somebody would just build some houses maybe we can find a staff member this was a while ago um all right Okay, so the Housing Authority would like to develop 2,264 residential units at the Brown Ranch and also 419,000 square feet of non-residential uses. Those include things like the fire station and a school, but it also includes things like a food market, a daycare center. It includes um, the Boys and Girls Club here in town, a uh, sports barn or a rec center for folks and other uses. So. There's a couple different phases. We've got the first phase right here is A. It's the one you see where the horse barn is now, right from Highway 40. That's going to have 400 to 480 units. 
Neighborhood B will be the 330 to 360. That's up here, kind of against that plateau. Uh, the neighborhood C will consist of 1,030 to 1,070 units. That's that nice big area that's in the middle. And then the last one, neighborhood D, uh, 480 to 510. Unit, unit composition at full build out will be 1,486 multifamily units at 65%. Basically, those are very similar to the housing authority properties we currently have, which are at our 129 and next to Moe's Barbecue, Alpha Globe that's over by Walgreens, and the one we're building right now behind McDonald's. The next group is the single family attached. So townhome -like units will be 21%. And 484 of those, so 294 single family detached units with ADUs, additional dwelling units, and it's 13% of total units. About 30% of that product will be for sale. The community asked for more for sale, and so our consultants recommended 15%, and we changed it to 30 because that's what the community wanted. John Schneider with the city is going to talk about a few here. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, my name is John Snyder. I'm the public works director for the city of Steamboat Springs. So as Sheila mentioned, we are in the throes of negotiating the annexation agreement. And so this is a quick summary of where we stand on stormwater, uh, also known as drainage, drinking water, um, and later we'll get into wastewater. So we're in general agreement on most issues on these topics. Uh, Housing Authority has agreed to basically follow all rules and regulations, both at the local and the state level for all of this. And the city in turn is comfortable providing water and uh, wastewater and stormwater services to the development. Um, we're in general agreement on most items and we don't have any areas where we blatantly disagree, which is a great thing. But down here in yellow are areas that, we're, that are still currently under discussion and it mostly revolves around uh, the Elk River Water Treatment Plant, which currently does not exist. So we are confident on the city side that we can serve the first 800 equivalent residential units at Brown Ranch off of our existing system. Uh, after those 800 units, which is probably sometime near the end of the second phase of development, whatever that second phase uh, turns out to be, then the city's going to need to have a third water supply online, and that would be the Elk River Supply. And so uh, where we're still discussing is uh, what should the percent cost share be between the city and the housing authority, and we're solving that by doing a, a fairly complicated water modeling exercise, which uh, should be finished up by the end of July. Um, wrapped into that is uh, a discussion on tap fees that would then go to help pay for that Elk River supply. And then um, later on, we'll have a water demand study that indicates exactly how much water Brown Ranch would use, that we will then measure every single application for Brown Ranch that comes through against that water demand report, just to make sure that uh, we're confident we're never gonna run out of water. So, that is a summary there if you want to advance to the next slide. Okay, our Parks Rec Director, Angela Cosby, is not able to be here tonight because she's covering a uh, Parks event. Uh, so I'll, find, I'll try to play a junior Parks Rec Director. <laughs> um, we do have several areas of agreement in the Parks and Open Space plans. You see them up here in green that we all want easy access to parks and homes because this is a high-density neighborhood where the uh, individual yards will be minimized. So you see the facts and figures on your screen. We have 70 acres of total park land, 125 acres of open space, and then additionally space for an indoor use facility. Uh, the, one of the major points of discussion, which we are far apart on right now, is whether or not the addition of a regional park would be should be included in the annexation agreement. And when we say regional park, I would say use Emerald Park as a good uh, indicator of what we're talking about there. So that's kind of what we're talking about. And then, you know, we, we do have some uh, more minor points of discussion, which we're close on regarding uh, ownership and land use for that special use facility, uh, how those amenities get designed, and then the funding of the, the construction and the ongoing maintenance. So we're, we're closer on this. With this, I'll turn it over to our interim police chief, Mark Beckett. Thanks, John. I try to get John to be the acting police and fire chief. Uh, I don't have a gun. <laughs> uh, mine's pretty limited. So, 
kind of like uh, where we are with water, public safety is in a similar place. We're in general agreement. So we recognize that uh, the increased population is going to bring with it is going to require uh, assets in both fire and police. The two are a little bit different. So we, we've agreed on that we need a space. Uh, we've agreed on the general size of the space. We're still dis discussing um, the timing of it. We're discussing the location to extent and the size of the actual lot. Uh, there's There are some technicalities that go into moving fire apparatus around in and out of garages and things like that. Uh, the police side is a fairly simple discussion. We, uh, because this area will be annexed, we just need the services to provide public safety or the law enforcement safety to this specific area. The fire discussion is a little more complicated because West Steamboat outside the city has a general need for more fire presence. So there, that discussion and the proportion of the cost that's going to go to Brown Ranch to or the city is still under discussion. Back to John. So on the subject of streets, alleys, and then mass transit, so uh, the city has agreed to provide the street services to Brown Ranch the same way we provide street services to the rest of the city of Steamboat Springs. So it will be city plows out there plowing the roads. Uh, it'll be the city out there maintaining the asphalt, doing the overlays as that's necessary, so on and so forth. Uh, what that means is, so right now we have five snow plowing routes that cover Steamboat Springs. In order to uh, provide services to Brown Ranch, we need to add a sixth plow route, and the Housing Authority has agreed to provide the capital funding to uh, make that sixth plow route a reality. Um, where we are still under negotiation is in mass transit, so we're talking SST to the bus service. Um, the design of the neighborhood is predicated on a lot of multimodal transportation. And the city would love to provide very good transit service to Brown Ranch, just like we have that desire to provide good transit service to all of Steamboat. The problem is, is that transit service is funded through the city's general fund, and the city's general fund currently cannot afford any expansion of our transit system. In fact, we actually reduce service on an annual basis right now due to the funding constraints of the general fund. So unfortunately, we will be able to provide a little bit of, of transit service to Brown Ranch, but not much. What it basically amounts to, based off of our current fiscal model, is that we would provide one general stop right near the entryway to neighborhood pay. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Jason Beasley. I'm the executive director of uh, Yemen Valley Housing Authority. Um, so I think one of the major topics of discussion um, related to Brown Ranch, that it's a question we hear from everyone is like, how the hell are you going to pay for all this? And, and so we are incredibly fortunate that our community banded together, voted in a short-term rental tax um, that's anticipated to bring in about $14 million a year. Uh, and so that is a resource over the next 20 years that we can tap into to fund a lot of the infrastructure that we're talking about here, be it parks, roads, uh, water treatment plants, you name it, um, you know, uh, new uh, fire stations, all of that um, is potentially eligible to utilize this SDR device. So uh, one of the major conversation points that we're having with the city is, okay, we have this pot of money, how much of it should be going to Brown Ranch to cover these expenses? Um, that's an ongoing conversation. Um, we're working with uh, a couple of different economics firms to help us kind of get to the bottom of what are all the expenses first and foremost. And then um, there's a bit of negotiation back and forth on what's the right uh, amount of money from that dedicated funding source for affordable housing that would go towards the ground range costs. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so um, one of the things we've been focusing a lot on is uh, the ways that community can provide input into this process at any time and multiple times if you so choose. So there's four different ways. Uh, you can go to the Brown Ranch Annexation Community meetings and they accept public comment at 1130. It's formatted a lot like city council where you can um, give your comments for three minutes. They do not answer questions. They're just listening to your opinions on things. Um, 
Also, we've got big town halls. There will be one more. It's July 27, and we have a four o'clock and a six o'clock at that one. Uh, and we'll have a lot more information then. Hopefully, everything's just super green, right? <laughs> um, and then you can also go to the website, and that is engagedsteamboat.net forward slash annex, and you can submit um, whatever you want to talk about. So those are the three ways. Oh, and we also give small presentations. So if we have not been to uh, a group or there's something that you're affiliated with and you'd like to have a small presentation on what's going on, please just let myself or Robin know or somebody from the Housing Authority or Brack, and we'll make sure and schedule one with you guys. So that is it for tonight. Um, we're gonna take questions and comments right now. And we've already got two. So I'll just read them to you. Some folks wrote them out and left them in a bin over there. Um, all of these millions being thrown around, it would help to have an estimate of what that means to the average resident. Also, I agree our existing city lacks much bike lanes on Tamarack and no speed enforcement. The other one is as a third grade teacher in town who has lived here 10 years, Brown Ranch is likely my last opportunity to buy in Steamboat. How and when would I be able to apply for this opportunity? Nikki, Nikki. Is there anyone here? Well, is somebody yes. to answer? Oh, do you want it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I guess the, so the, so the, the process of um, applying to, to live at Brown Ranch is a little bit down the line. Um, we obviously have to get through the sanitation process with the city. Uh, and then uh, get the approvals to go build the streets and build the buildings. Um, well, our anticipation is that uh, by 2027, uh, we will have some buildings uh, going vertical and that people will be able to apply for housing at that point. So um, that's the that's the goal um, for, for us to be able to deliver that. Um, the, the question about the... Um, the kind of what the money means for an average resident. I think it's really uh, kind of a fascinating question. Um, well, one of the things that we know about the development of affordable housing in this community is that the costs exceed the individual's ability to pay in almost every scenario. So, you know, we're talking about households that are making probably over $200,000 are, are about at the range where you're capable of affording market rate product. So everyone below that, some amount of subsidy is needed to create that unit, uh, either through uh, the short-term rental tax, it's, not, it's an example of subsidy, free land that's donated to the housing authority, it's an example of the subsidy. All of that, um, all of those investments that we can make as a community help bring down the cost to the level at which the individuals can afford it. And so um, when we're talking about, you know, uh, really, really large numbers. What it comes down to is how much of those numbers are attributed to any individual unit. And when you start stacking it all up, it's likely to be higher than what the individual can pay, either in a rent uh, or in a purchase price. And so it's our job to either decrease the costs, so finding efficiencies or tightening our belt a little bit um, so that we can bring those costs down, uh, or we have to increase revenue through these subsidies. Um, working, you know, working on grants, working on um, various other funding techniques. Um, but what we know is that we as a community have to make an investment so that we can deliver the housing in our communities. It's not going to happen from a free market standpoint. So um, that's, I think, the most important kind of concept related to sort of what does it mean to the individual is that we're going to have to invest significant amounts of resources to make any unit available. Um, the more we do, the more efficiency we can make, um, and we can hopefully bring that gap down as much as possible. There's a mic right there. Hi. I'll bring the mic to you so that it will not be here. No, no it's, a, it's attached. No, it's attached. Yeah. She. Yeah, because people online can't hear you. Can you hear me? 
Hi, my name is Adriana Jarvis. Nobody knows me. I've only been in town four days. Uh, I'm currently uh, getting away from a domestic situation I had down in Florida. So I drove eight at eight days and made it up to this beautiful little place. And um, I fell in love here. But unfortunately, a couple of days ago, I fell ill, ended up in the emergency room. Now I'm currently living in my feet and I would love to stay here. Now I'm thinking maybe if we can brainstorm together, we can make that 2027 a lot of money. Because if I can make it all by myself, disabled, I have liver cancer in my little van, all I need is a spot to have security. And uh, that's a beginning point. Instead of waiting for the buildings and everything, do something like I've been doing, just to help people like me in my situation. I need something right away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for thank you for saying all that. Um, we actually have a couple other properties that are uh, in ones in the process of being constructed and will be leasing up later this fall. Uh, which is an opportunity for folks who are looking for housing to get into that. That's on the English Drive. Um, and then we'll be breaking ground later this year um, on the project that's uh, behind UC Health uh, Urgent Care Center. Uh, and that'll be a mixture of uh, rental housing and for sale housing. Uh, and uh, I believe that'll continue on board uh, kind of in this time period between now and when we're able to use other housing at the operation. Anyone else here want to make a comment or have a question? Or is it Catherine? Uh, this is just a follow up to this question. Uh, Jason, can you can... This is just a follow up to your very good point. Could you expand a bit on for individuals um, like this person spoke before what the process would be if they wanted to apply for the um, the English property? Where what website they need to look at? Just what? Well, I would love to hang on. Yeah. Oh, just real quickly. I'm just saying until I get the Yeah. So we can talk after this, and I'll and I'll put you in touch. The Housing Authority has a housing navigator that can help you with a plethora of information. So we'll we'll speak. Is there anyone online that wishes to make a comment? Nobody? Okay. We have some guests. There's a chat. The no, but that was just, chat. that was me asking if anyone oh, wanted okay. to make a public comment. <laughs> um, we have some guests in town that are working with the city, and um, Clay partly wished to make an announcement. Can you go over here? Yeah, yeah. So you can do that one. Hey everybody, um, I'm Clay Hartley. I'm a uh, graduate student at the University of Colorado at Denver. Um, I'm here with 20 other students. We've got Dina and Shana with them tonight, but there are 20 of us here and we're helping do we some community outreach uh, to help the city with the upcoming uh, community, the uh, Phoenix uh, Springs Community Area Plan. And uh, so we've just been talking with some folks and you know seeing what you guys think about what you'd like to see included in the new plan. And uh, tomorrow night, we're gonna have an open house here from 4.30 to 7.30. Um, so you're welcome to come. We'd love to see anybody and everybody. And uh, you know, we're just here to hopefully become better planners and to help you guys you know, come up with a, a good plan that works for everybody. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Clay. Yeah. Okay. Then we are all set. Thanks everybody on Zoom for coming and we'll see you July 27th at either four or six o'clock. Thank you.